Mike Alcoholic. I had somebody a while ago tell me that they were uh, they were tired of hurting, uh, and it had nothing to do with uh, alcoholism, and it made me reflect on um, when I came in. It took me a minute to realize that I was tired of hurting. Um, I think that's why in the book where it talks about driven into AA by the lash of alcoholism, it was here that I discovered the fatal nature of my situation. It wasn't out there that I discovered it. I came in here with many pieces of denial and rationalization. Although I wanted the heat off, I wasn't willing to do anything more than simply mouth the words that I want to stop hurting. I wasn't willing to let my actions show it. Um, thank goodness I found somebody that was properly armed with the facts and I uh, got somebody that could keep me in the book and, and uh, help me to see the value of pages like what was read off of and the statement about the common solution being so much more important than sharing the common problem. Um, a quote from Bill W. early on, when there was only a couple of meetings, when he could control what went on, he said, "We, there was very little talk of drunk stories in meetings in those days. That was between you and your sponsor, and frankly, it was nobody's business. We made everybody in meetings share about recovery because in doing so, we gave ourselves something to live up to. And I find that to be an interesting parallel to the page that you read there, and I assume it's the first page of there is a solution. What we have is a common solution, and I think it's important for newcomers to hear people consistently sharing about what they're doing today to deal with their problems, to stay out of the ditch, not describing the walls of the ditch or what it was like being in the ditch, because to me, that has zero value. We all know how to do that. Although there is comfort in talking about that, when I leave a situation where all I've talked about is reminiscing how I used to piss in the closet, thinking it was a bathroom and I was in a blackout, that I leave my finding myself wanting because there's nothing to live up to. And I, I find that it makes me think about the promises that we read in every meeting. And we're trained in AA, even from a day sober, <laughs> to recant this chant that everybody says at the end of the promises, we think not. And I've often pondered, after a little time, I'm thinking, who are the we that's actually saying we think not? Because when they wrote that, they didn't plan on it being said in meetings or read in meetings. It was something that those 100 people that on that page at the top says, nearly all have recovered, were thousands of men and women, once hopeless but not anymore, the ones that have recovered are the ones saying we think not. A newcomer, they should be a very extravagant. That's my point. So there's a delicate balance that has to be struck between, you know, sharing how good life is, but we have to also interject that it takes action to get there. And in the beginning, these promises that we read that we all say are not extravagant, if we just simply say they're not extravagant and don't address the fact that to a newcomer, they may in fact be extravagant because you haven't worked the steps and recovered yet, we need to instill in them that there is the work that must be done. Because if all, if I, t if all I tell you is a newcomer is, oh, it's, it's not extravagant, it's easy. Guess what? You think it's easy and you don't do shit. And that's why five and a hundred make it instead of 75 and 100 when they wrote the book. Now, these are uncomfortable truths that I'm talking about. I understand that. But when I read that page, there's a lot. Of, it's steeped in history. It's steeped in AA history, that page. And I think it's important that I, as an old-timer, I, as a person who considers himself to have worked the steps and the drink problem has been solved, as that page says, that is in that position of neutrality, safe and protected, Although in a moment of temptation, like it says on 85, a great revulsion happens in me, happens automatically with little or no effort, I need to tell the newcomer that 
it takes a lot of effort to get to that place where you're in that moment. Because if you're in a newcomer and you put no effort, what do we do as a newcomer when a moment of temptation? We immediately go get drunk. So what I find today that the miracle has happened. I don't have to wait five minutes for it to happen. It has happened. And the position of neutrality, safe and protected, is something that's, that, that sounds good and it rolls off the lips. But I want to tell newcomers that are in here, please put the effort into it. Because as my, well, I won't say who said it, but whoever said I'm tired of hurting, in here there's something I can do about me hurting. The person that said it, there's nothing that they can do. And I heard it in their voice. And it made me think about how serious I am. How serious am I about my recovery? Am I just saying I'm tired of hurting? Or am I going to let my actions speak louder than my words? I've had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, and I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you.